know that song to be true in your life, yes. give God some praise. Amen. He is the source and the strength of my life. Yes. Yes. See, without him, I have no strength. Amen. Right. Hey, without him, I have no source. Yes. Amen. Yes. Without him, you know, I'll be stumbling and falling every day. Amen. But I thank God that, I thank God for Jesus. Amen. Yeah. See, whenever, whenever else and everything in life fails, you know, Christ will never fail. Yes. When we keep our eyes stayed on the sparrow, yeah. mm -hmm. Christ will have our back. Yeah. See, we need to, I realize that in my life, I need to keep my eyes stayed on Jesus. Yes. Because when you keep your eyes stayed on Jesus, nothing really else ever matters. That's the truth of the matter. Yes. That is the truth of the matter. If you would turn, turn your Bibles to Genesis Chapter 32. We're going to go to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 32. And we're going to be reading verses 22 through 32. Genesis 32. We're going to be reading verses 22 through 32. And when you get there, please stand. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 
This is the second spiritual encounter of Jacob's life. Mm -hmm. The first was at a place called Bethel, according to Genesis 28. Uh -huh. uh, you see, at Bethel, Jacob saw a lamb. Mm -hmm. At Jabbok, he saw the Lord. Mm -hmm. At Bethel, Jacob became a believing man. Mm -hmm. At Jabbok, he became a broken man. Right. At Bethel, Jacob became a son of God. Mm -hmm. And at Jabbok, he became a saint of God. Okay. Mm -hmm. At Bethel, he died to his sins. Mm -hmm. And at Jabbok, he died to self. Mm -hmm. You see, he left Bethel with a spring in his step, mm -hmm. <laughs> but left Jabbok with a lasting limp, mm -hmm. but with a forever changed heart. Mm -hmm. all right. Now, all men and women need a Bethel experience. Mm -hmm. Every person in this room needs to be able to recall the time when you met God personally and you received him and he became, and you became his child. Yeah. Uh -huh. And let me ask you, and you don't have to give me an answer, but you can shout it if you want to. Uh -huh. Is it salvation wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. However, many never go beyond that experience. Mm -hmm. They get saved and that is as far as they go. They never seem to be able to produce anything for the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, while we must all have a Bethel experience mm -hmm. if we expect to get to heaven, mm -hmm. we all also need a Jabbok experience mm -hmm. if we ever hope to be useful to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, the very thing that happened to Jacob mm -hmm. needs to happen in the life of every believer in this room. Amen. You see, he spent the night talking with the Lord, and he was never the same. And I would venture to say that 99% of all Christians need to have a little talk with Jesus like Jacob did. See, our text revolves around one man named Jacob. His story is a long story. It starts with his birth in Genesis 25 and runs all the way through Genesis 50 where he is buried in the same cave with his parents, grandparents, and one of his wives. That is 25 chapters containing the life, time, and experience of one man. The Bible said he was the son of Isaac and Rebekah, the grandson of Abraham and Sarah, and the twin brother of Esau. Right. He had 12 sons and one daughter by two wives, Leah and Rachel, Amen. and their maid servants. Amen. And as a result of a severe famine in Canaan, Jacob resettled his whole family in Egypt. At the time when his son Joseph was viceroy, Jacob died there 17 years later and Joseph carried Jacob's remains to the land of Canaan, uh -huh. where he was buried. Uh -huh. Jacob and his twin Esau uh -huh. are born to their parents Isaac and Rebekah uh -huh. 20 years after their marriage. Uh -huh. One twin came out hairy and red uh -huh. all over, and the other came out grasping the heel of his older brother with his hand. Uh -huh. The older one was named Esau, meaning rough, assistantly felt. The younger one, the baby boy, mama's boy, was named Jacob, uh -huh. meaning heel catcher, uh -huh. suck planner, deceiver, a trickster in some circles. Uh -huh. You see, a sub planner is one who wrongfully or illegally sees and holds the place of another. Uh -huh. His name is so fitting because it you Bible readers recall, mm -hmm. Jacob deceived his brother Esau mm -hmm. by selling him a bowl of lentil soup mm -hmm. in exchange for Esau's birthright. Mm -hmm. And his mother Rebecca conspired with Jacob mm -hmm. to manipulate a situation mm -hmm. at his father's, Isaac's, deathbed to ensure that her baby boy mm -hmm. will receive the blessing of the birthright. Mm -hmm. And some may think that Jacob was wrong in doing this, mm -hmm. but this is part of God's plan. Uh -huh. 
So with that in mind, let's spend some time looking into these verses and see what transpired during Jacob's talk with the Lord. I want to speak on this topic. Just a little talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus. Now in verse 24, Jacob, it tells us that Jacob was very much alone. Jacob was facing a serious time of testing. He had left his home behind and he was about to face a brother he had grown many years earlier. At this juncture in his life, he needed to seek counsel from the Lord. The fact that Jacob, Jacob spent the night in prayer is evident in Hosea chapter 12, verse 4, where it says, Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplications unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spoke with us. As he ended this time of prayer meeting, he found Jacob himself very alone. All he had was gone. Family, servants, livestock, wealth, everything that he owned was gone. Jacob was forced to face God all alone. You see, many people fear this kind of loneliness. Some people structure their lives around people so there is no room for loneliness. And the reason for this is when we are all alone and unoccupied, then we have a time to come face to face with God. Yeah. Okay. Say amen if you hear me. You see, when we are busy, we can occupy the heart and mind. When we are all alone and still, it is easier for us to hear the Lord when he is speaking. Yeah. You see, people cannot stand the noise of quietness. Mm -hmm. And that is why people have to be connected to Facebook, Snapchat, or Twitter. Because they need to be connected to somebody. Say amen if you hear me. Amen. But let me suggest to you to get out of Facebook and put your face in the book, okay. which is the word of God. All right. All right now. You see, many sinners tend to fill their lives with busy work so that they can avoid the voice of God. You see, if we Christians are going to be strong in the Lord, then we must find time to be alone with the Lord. Yeah. See, the value of a daily quiet time is clearly demonstrated in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You see, he took time to be alone with the Father. Yeah. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23 says, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And, where, and, when, he, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. And Luke chapter 6, verse 12 says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. You see, you and I should never fear being alone with the Lord. He only has good plans for us. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an, an expected end. So we see in the beginning of this verse, Jacob was very much alone. But the latter part of verse 24 and 25 tells us that Jacob was very much alive. As Jacob prayed that night, it appears that he experienced a theophany. Say amen. You hear me? That is, he was privileged to be in a place where the Lord decided to manifest himself in a personal manner. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get that definition, he had the privilege to be in the presence of a pre-incoordinated Christ. Yeah. A theophany and a pre-Bethlehem appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. The angel was unable to overcome Jacob. And of course, we know that God could whoop Jacob with just the thought of his mind. 
but he allowed Jacob to fight mm -hmm. and to bring Jacob to the place where he was able to see himself as he truly was. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, Jacob represented the fleshly nature of man. Mm -hmm. He represented our old sinful nature that is constantly fighting against the Lord. These natures that we are born with are pride, stubbornness, unyielding, fighting, and self-sufficient. Yeah. The old nature of man is everything the saints of God should not be. Yeah. The fact is, many of us are just like Jacob. We fight the Lord at every turn in our lives. Yeah. God will tell us something is wrong, and the old nature rebels against the Lord's truth. God will tell us something is right or good in our life, and our flesh rise up against it in defiance. Paul struggled with this dilemma in Romans chapter 7. And may I remind you this morning that the old nature is not fit to live. It deserves one thing, and that is to be put to death. So if your pride is all that you got, if your self-sufficient is all that you got, if all you got has got to be my way and nobody else's way, it's got to die if you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. We're called upon to break in the old man dead. Mm -hmm. However, we'd like, we'd like to drag the corpse around with us. Mm -hmm. The Roman practice of taking a convicted murderer into the desert, staking him into the ground, and lying the corpse over the corpse of his victim on top of him, just as the corruption from that corpse, corpse would fall upon that guilty man until he eventually died. So our old nature eats away at, at us, bringing death, destruction, and corruption in return. You see, the old man nature is fit for nothing less than the fire of hate. It does not deserve to live. And I join Paul in saying this, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I must serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So I challenge you, and I ask, I challenge you to ask yourself this question. Who is alive in you? All right. Self, the old nature, or Jesus Christ himself? All right. Do you constantly find yourself fighting against the Lord? Do you constantly find yourself going against the prick? Amen? Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself acting stubbornly when faced with God's plans for your life? In short, do you find yourself being disobedient to God's word? Mm -hmm. And let me ask you again. Who is alive in you, the flesh, or the Lord Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, verses 6 through 7 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Mm -hmm. For he that is dead is free from sin. Mm -hmm. And Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, Amen. who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. So we see Jacob was very much alone, and Jacob was very much alive. But the latter part of verse 25 and 32 tells us that Jacob was very much altered. This night, this one night in the life of Jacob was the climax or high point mm -hmm. of 20 years of patient activity by the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. Say amen if you hear me. Yeah. Patient activity of the Lord for 20 years. Mm -hmm. But we as his children, we want instant everything today. <laughs> we want instant coffee. Yeah. We want instant tea. Mm -hmm. We want instant grits. We want instant gratification. We want instant everything. Amen. Yet there is one thing for sure. Instant holiness is not available to anyone. 
It is always the result of prayer, sacrifice, and self-denial. It seems that God always takes time in bringing us to spiritual maturity. Amen. He gently and patiently leads us along and brings us to the place where we can be filled and used for his glory. Amen. This is evident in the life of Jacob. Amen. Verses 25 through 27 says, tells us he was a broken man. Amen. Notice, he was clinging. Jacob is no longer fighting this angel, amen? He's merely holding on. If we insist on fighting the Lord and his attempts at growing us, he will eventually bring us to the place where all the fight in us is gone. Amen. You see, he knows exactly where and how to touch your life to get your attention. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Just ask Absalom and Joab in 2 Samuel chapter 14. God's desire for your life and mine is that we come to the place where we stop walking in our own power and self-sufficiency and we come to the place where we are dependent on Him for everything. You see, He wants us to understand the truth of John chapter 15, verse 5, where it reads, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. So without me, ye can do nothing. So don't ever allow someone to tell you that God helped those that helped themselves. Right. Come on now. You see, God wants us to be totally dependent upon him. Also notice in these verses that he was confessing. The angel demanded to know Jacob's name. All right. He forced him to admit just who he is. All right. All right. And for you Bible scholars out there, mm -hmm. you see, back in the Old Testament and in Jewish community of customs, mm -hmm. your name described your character. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. So when the angel of the Lord, or was Jesus Christ himself, asked Jacob, what is your name? Jacob was saying, my name is Jacob, uh -huh. the trickster, the subplanter, mm -hmm. the deceiver, the cheat, the one who takes you by the heel, mm -hmm. or in our terms, one who twists the arm. Mm -hmm. right. So Jacob is confessing who he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ain't here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. right. His name described his character. Mm -hmm. Our past, the way we lived before we knew Christ, mm -hmm. Amen. Some was deceiver, some was liar, some was gossiper, some was a little bit of everything. But when we came to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we was not only given a new, we were made new creatures, but we were given a new name. Yes. We were given the name the children of God. Because before God, we were the children of Satan. Yes. But when we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we became the children of God. Say amen if you hear me. Amen. Amen. That will make somebody shout right there. Amen. Amen. Jacob had to come to the place of seeing himself as he really was before the Lord could use him. Amen. And by the way, God can't use any of us Amen. until we are willing to admit the truth about ourselves to right. Amen. Amen. You see, God can't use us until we come to the place where we are willing to admit that we are failures and sinners before him, and that we are incapable of anything without him. Amen. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, mm -hmm. If we confess our sins, yes. he is yes. faithful and just yeah. to forgive us our sins yeah. and to cleanse us from all, not some, yeah. all unrighteousness. Yeah. Confess your sins because he is faithful and just. You see, God will bless an honest heart. Psalms 51, chapter, verse 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. And verses 28 through 30 tells us that Jacob was a blessed man. Okay, we see that he was a broken man. Mm -hmm. That's and he 
means a blessed man. Yeah. Now Jacob, who left Canaan, was capable of deceiving his brother, lying to his blind father, mm -hmm. and cheating a crooked uncle. Right. Two wrongs don't make a right. Oh, yeah. But the man who returns is a man with a new nature. No more Jacob the trickster, All right. but Israel, yes. a prince with God. Mm -hmm. God's fight. Mm -hmm. Amen. God's purpose in breaking us is always the same. He does it so that he can make us over again. It's called a new life, a new creature. Jeremiah 18 and 4 says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the pot. Or should I say, in the hand of God. So he made it again another vessel. That seemed good to the potter to make it. God doesn't throw us away, y'all. No, but he shapes us and molds us until we fit the image he desires for us to have. Yeah. You see, he really is still working on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saul, who we know now know as Apostle Paul, was worthless until he was broken before the Lord. Yeah. But once he was broken, the world was touched. The world was touched by Jesus through Paul. All right. That's a blessing. Yeah. Amen. And I wonder what God could do with each of us if we came to that place where we were totally broken and yield before the Lord, where we have no selfish desires, where we just care about each other and all we want to do is love one another. Where we are not caught up in titles or positions. Where all we want to do is to stay focused on Jesus and to do God's will. Verses 31 through 32 tells us that Jacob was a branded man. He was a broken man. He's a blessed man. Blessed man. Now he's a brand new man. All right. And I got a story for that too. Some may ask, how was he branded? He was branded by the lamb. Amen. Everywhere Jacob went after that day, he carried the mark of God upon his body. When he stood before Pharaoh in Genesis chapter 47, he had the lamb. Every step he took reminded him and everyone around him that he was the Lord's and that the Lord had touched him in a very personal way. Amen. The believer is no different. Matthews 5 and 16 tells us, let your light so shine Amen. before me Amen. that they may see your good works yes. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. We should all be branded by the light of Christ. Yes. Paul said in Galatians 6 and 17, that from henceforth let no man trouble me. Oh, glory, hallelujah. For I bear in my body yes. the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. The law of the bond slave yes. in Exodus chapter 21 mm. tells us after the hole that was in his ear and bore in the ear, right. there was no doubt as to whom the slave belonged to. And by the way, folks should know, should not have to wonder about who we belong to. Amen. Amen. The walk of the believer ought to be different than the world. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, yes. he is a new creature. Yes. All things are passed away. Uh -huh. Behold, all things are become new. You see, we should not be hanging out at the club. We should not be gossiping and lying on folks. We should not be in the prophecies of our own home getting high and drunk. Christian men should not be out there chasing every skirt they see. And Christian women should not be out there looking for some man to pay their bills. When we are walking with the Lord, we would always be out of step with the Word. Come on, somebody. Because we're new creatures in Christ. And what I love about this scripture is found in verse 26. 
when Jacob said, I will not let thee go except I bless me. You see, we need to hold on to Jesus for our blessings. We need to hold on so he can bless us with his word. Come on, somebody. We need to hold on so we, he can bless us in reshaping us and remolding us to be what he wants to be. You see, when you hold on to Jesus, your enemies will be your footstool. We need to hold on to Jesus so he can bless us with his light. Because without him, we have no light. We need to hold on to Jesus so he can bless us by keeping the old nature dead. We need to hold on to Jesus so he can bless us by being quick to listen, yes. slow to speak, yes. and slow to anger. Yes. We need to hold on yes. to Jesus yes. so he can bless us with a forgiving yes. and patient heart. Yes. We need to hold on to Jesus so he can bless us in loving one another. Yes. Uh -huh. You see, you cannot belong to him if you, can, if you don't love your brother or sister. Uh -huh. If you backbite him, if you stab him in the back, if you lie your brother and sister, yeah. you don't belong to Christ. Right. You see, may I have noticed that I did not mention any material blessings. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is I want the spiritual blessings from heaven. Yeah. You see, spiritual blessings are more beneficial yeah. than any material things. Yeah. But that's another sermon. Yeah. <laughs> All I want you to know is when you hold on to Jesus, yes. He will be your everything. Yes, you know? yes, He will. Obstacles, obstacles, things may stumble, come across you to cause you to try to make you stumble. Yes. Things, people may say things about you that make you want to forget about who you belong to. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. People may stab you in the back yeah. who you've trusted all your life. Yes. But see, when you become a child of God, yes. the Bible lets us know that this is not going to be an easy walk. Yes. Yes. But see, but I'd rather walk this walk yeah. with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. So I will hold on till he bless me. Oh, yes. I will hold on till he gives me peace yes. in my sorrow. Yes. I will hold on when he, until he gives me joy in my trial. Yes. Yes. I will hold on to Jesus yes. because he is my beginning and my end. He is my Alpha and my Omega. He is my Jehovah Jireh. He is my Jehovah Shalom. He is my everything. I will keep my eyes stayed on Jesus. And in conclusion, Jacob's life was one of contrasts. Before this incident, faulty, substandard living Mark this man's life. Mm -hmm. Remember, he deceived his brother, lied to his father, and he was trying to deceive his uncle, even though his uncle did the same to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But like I said, two wrongs don't make a right. Mm -hmm. After this eventful night, holiness and spirituality marked him. Mm -hmm. You see, if you were perfectly honest this afternoon, mm -hmm. Which would you say best describes your life? Mm -hmm. Carnal or spiritual? Mm -hmm. Perhaps this world would be a good, perhaps this would be a good time for you to come to the altar mm -hmm. and let this be the place for your pineal experience. Mm -hmm. You see, you want to go beyond just being saved, saints, mm -hmm. because he didn't save us not to use us here on earth. All right. Let this day be the day when you come before the Lord mm -hmm. and allow yourself to be broken mm -hmm. by Him for service. Yes. Let this be the time when you yes. are forever altered. Yes. The time when you fully and finally present yes. yourself as a living sacrifice yes. to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. See, many of you know you have resisted His call. Let today be the day when you find yourself out of step with the world mm -hmm. and in step with God. Mm -hmm. And let me say this, 
The Bible tells us do not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. We have to realize God wants us to be obedient. And if we're not obedient, he will not bless us. He won't bless us individually or collectively. Keep your eyes stayed on Jesus. Amen. Let no one deter you. Amen. I'm preaching to myself right now. <laughs> All right now. Amen. Don't, nobody, don't let nobody take you off his path. Yes. And don't nobody, don't let allow anybody to steal your joy. Yes. Because in the end, we all get the victory. Hallelujah. Because Christ has already fallen yes. and has already given us the victory. Yes. So praise God if you can. Amen. Let me say this. We are at the end of times. And if you want to be part of a church body where you can develop and grow spiritually in the word of God, the doors are open.